Hi guys, it's Dee and welcome to Dee's Yard. So here we are in the beginning of November and temperatures are steadily starting to drop here in East Tennessee with a couple of nighttime lows around freezing. So it is time for me to decide what frost tenor annuals I want to save. Of course, I wish I could save them all. However, I just don't have room for that in my house. So one thing I want to mention before we move on is there is always a risk when you bring your outdoor annuals inside to overwinter. Each plant is going to react differently and every plant is going to go through some sort of level of shock. But when it comes to annuals, that we're gonna die back anyways, what do we really have to lose? Gardening is all about trying old and new plants in new places, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So some of the more common annuals that overwinter fairly well in your house will include impatience, begonias, coleus, sweet potato vine, geraniums, euphorbia, polka dot plant, and I'm sure there's a ton more that I'm forgetting. So in this video, I'm gonna show you two different methods for three different type of annuals that I'm gonna to use to overwinter in my house. The first method I will be taking cuttings of coleus. The first step is to select a healthy insect free plant. I sprayed this coleus about a week ago with organic insect spray to prepare an insect free plant for moving indoors. Also there are no visible diseases and overall this is a very healthy plant. So when I'm taking coleus cuttings, I don't want to stretch out plant so I'm only going to go down two to three leaf nodes and make an angle cut with clean snips. I remove all the leaves except for the top. Then I just place the cutting in water. And you can expect roots in about a week or two. Then after, I will pot the cutting up once I get a healthy root system. Here are some tips for rooting coleus. You really want to make sure you change out the water every few days, otherwise it will get slimy. You also want to make sure that you're placing your cuttings in bright light or use a grow light to supplement. You can also dig this plant up to divide or if you have enough space, even take the whole plant into overwinter. Which takes me to the next method. I'm going to dig both my diamond frost euphorbia and my polka dot plant up, repot and bring indoors to overwinter. First, I inspect both plants for disease and insects. I personally like to spray any plant I'm bringing indoors with an organic insect spray about one week before bringing inside. Also, remove any dead or decaying foliage because that is a hiding place for insects and an incubator for diseases. Then I will prune both plants to appropriate size to bring indoors and to try to reduce the trailing effect on both plants. Then I dig up the plant as best as I can. Both plants have been in their container since May, so they are rooted in fairly well. So some roots will be cut and the plants will go through some shock. It's impossible to save all the roots unless the entire container comes in. The next step, I place both plants in their new container with some fresh potting soil. I always use a pot with a drainage hole and will place a saucer of some sort underneath so the water doesn't damage the surface in my house, but also so the plant still gets proper drainage. 
The next step is to water both plants thoroughly before bringing inside. So the last step is to bring all of my cuttings and potted plants inside. When thinking about where to place your plants, you want them to be in an area with a lot of bright light. And since the days are shorter during the winter, supplementing with a grow light might not be a bad idea. Now let's talk a little bit about humidity. Air in our houses tend to be quite dry with forced air, so misting your plants every few days with a spray bottle wouldn't be a bad idea. You could also use a shallow pan or plant saucer with pebbles or gravel and add water. Then just place the pan under the plant. The evaporated water creates humidity for the plant and just refill the water as needed. I also want to mention that I do not recommend fertilizing and only water when the top of the soil is dry to the touch. So thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I'll be sure to keep you updated on how everything overwinters and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys!